In your lecturing methodologies, quite a lot of attention is being devoted to the process of searching and connecting to one's own gods, the progenitors. You also mentioned the souls who, by the way of their creation, are not a part of God's consciousness, but rather develop in the process of reincarnational evolution from a consciousness of an animal to that of a human. I suppose that with sufficient degree of development of the latter, it would be impossible to tell one from another. In that case, what about the final technical task, since if there is no progenitor God to connect to, one also wouldn't see any difference? Is it possible that such souls always reincarnate through Dionysus' channel? It's quite a vast question, Rita, and a very interesting one. Let's try, colleagues, once again to elaborate on this topic, the topic of the creation of the human soul, human consciousness. And one of the aspects of this question that Rita asked is a probability that a part of your soul or a part of a soul of a living being inside of a human body may not be part of a God's consciousness, but instead keeps on being reincarnated in a natural way, the way of the so-called evolution. And so along the path of biology, of genetics, it finally reaches the state of a homo sapiens. Does it happen? Of course it does. But is it possible to say that there is no connection with a God? Probably not. Perhaps it is a very archaic, forgotten deity, force or consciousness that lives within the consciousness of the mother, in her utero, within her memory. We all know that every god in every pantheon doesn't only possess its human-like projections, but also those of biological, animalistic, vegetative and elemental nature. Gods can manifest themselves in different ways. This is just a projection. And a human would not be an exception. It is still only a projection. And if a forgotten consciousness manifests itself initially through an animal and then develops itself through, for example, some biological elements of this world up to the capabilities of a human mind, all this does not mean that this human consciousness is of a purely animalistic nature. It's just that the level of his own recollections is not too vast at this moment. Does such consciousness possess a technical task? It does, just like any forgotten deity, only it is forgotten in the same exact way. And now it is being given a second chance, so to say. From the viewpoint of a developed human consciousness that is already aware of himself as a part of a god, the latter one, of course, appears to be quite primitive. And that's exactly how we will look from the sidelines. Same as in reality, in comparison to any other beings, such an individual may possibly seem very simple, perhaps slightly uneducated, or slow in understanding. Common folk would call such people special, but it does not mean that they have no chance in achieving a certain level of self-consciousness in their future reincarnations. We evaluate these people by how short their memory is, especially the operative one. It's too short for sure, more or less an hour long. They can't remember more than that, but they also have no use for it. Firstly, because the option to remember a lot is missing. It develops itself in the process, throughout one's life, in the process of gaining experience, and the experience in its turn is formed within an environment. If you live among animals, your experience will be formed one way. If you live among people, your experience will form another way. Incidents were described even by science when, for example, children found themselves in the world of animals and were raised there for some time. And when they returned back to a human environment, they would not regain their human consciousness, meaning that they would remain an animal, even though perhaps they were not born that way. But this is just an example to demonstrate the importance of the environment, the primary environment in the development of consciousness. But not just that. 
Undoubtedly, also the inner power of a soul, the inner power of memory. A mature soul already possesses certain criteria, such as what to remember, what to learn, what to figure out. In this sense, a soul, a consciousness, as well as a human life and fate become extremely productive since time gets saved and it is not wasted on gaining experience that is no longer needed. The experience that the person already went through and perhaps not just in one lifetime alone. Those are the characteristics of a mature soul. Instead, the characteristics of a young, inexperienced soul is that it is focused on obtaining any type of experience, because every experience is a novelty. In this regard, colleague, you made a right conclusion that most likely such souls will reincarnate through Dionysus's channel, since it provides them exactly these types of opportunities. It doesn't limit them with distinct rules and deadlines for their technical tasks. It provides all necessary resources that are present at this very moment in space and time. But with all that, the other side of the coin is that the rest of reality, the social environment created by egregors, won't be helping such a consciousness in any way. It absolutely won't. Meaning that it won't assist the person with the leading him towards events that are absolutely, totally and undoubtedly necessary. This person finds himself in all sorts of different events, and that is why it may seem that the lifestyle of such people is worthless. They are called a mass, a biological mass. And in some instances, they play this very role, simply because they don't know that it is possible to play other roles. But everything comes with experience. Maybe one day, a long time ago, many of us started with a similar incarnation, this exact type of development. Or maybe not. Because besides this reality, there are many other ones, many other worlds. And a mature soul may find herself in a completely different reality for her next reincarnation. And everything will be a novelty to her there. She will think that, and create an impression for others, that she's completely naive, so to say, in different areas of life and existence. But at the same time, all that will still be wrong, because she does have a certain internal memory that is not understood by those who surround her, those living here in Midgard, in this earthly life. Also your question, dear colleague, reminds me that I need to mention a very important quality of someone who follows the path of magic that may possibly, during this lecture, will sound like a chorus, since it's a very popular topic nowadays. And I will try to demonstrate that during our whole lecture, with the help of your questions as well as my answers, and prove that now, in this very moment, you have a great opportunity to get rid of a certain quality of your consciousness that in magic is considered to be fatal, as fatal for it as it is for the one who follows its path. This quality of consciousness is called unambiguity, that there is one only way possible. If it's black, then it's black, and the opposite color will be called white, and not any other color, because it is strictly the opposite. If it's this way, then it's the only way possible. If it's that way, then that's the only possible one. No half shades, no allowances, no variables, nothing. In magic, we should always remember that any concept with a higher or lower probability is most likely a magic one, rather than not, rather than a common, routine, human one. And nothing ever happens in just one way and not the other, on the path of magic as well as in its perception. If we say, for example, in regards to this question, that a person has a young soul and he is in one of his first reincarnations, and that he is being reincarnated from an animal state, we should not put an equality sign between such a person and some type of social characteristics that we usually attribute to the behavior of this individual. 
From a magical point of view, it will be incorrect. From the point of view of a casual person, it will be absolutely right. But in that case, we won't be talking about magic. Let's try to learn how to do it. Nowadays, I repeat, we live in a time when people are being sorted by these criteria, literally sorted out. Meaning that they are classified by criteria, black or white, Christian, atheist, pro or contra, agree, disagree, support, don't support. Just these criteria and no third option. And it definitely affects the magic core, since it can't exist within a binary system. We are all learning this, how to leave the binary system behind. Constantly learning during each of our lessons, during every lecture of GTM. We talk about it regularly, making considerations on it, and we will now do so again. Let's catch ourselves each time we manifest binary views and immediately try to correct them, so that it won't be possible to get classified, even by pure accident, into a certain category, and as a consequence have to spend tremendous amounts of effort in order to change this classification, to cancel it, erase it, and so on.